Hey guys, this is Deshanta B here, and I'm just coming on to do a little bit of kibbutzing with you, and maybe even share a little brief story time. But happy Saturday. I hope that your weekend is going good so far. To all my new subscribers, welcome to the DB family, and I hope that you enjoy the ride. And to my DBs, debonair and beautiful, you already know how I feel about you. I simply, simply adore you. Well, guys, you already know what goes on with Deshanta B. Deshanta B doesn't sleep. I have sleep apnea and insomnia, and maybe I get about maybe an hour and a half to two hours sleep a night, and my brain never stops, and everything is always clouding up my brain. So I decided I think my body is starting to purge, or at least trying to purge. If you know me, you know if you tell me something, it doesn't come out this mouth. Things that may have happened to me or things that bother me, I say nothing about it. If you tell me something and say, do not tell anyone, right here is where it stops. I do not run my mouth. I'm not a gossiper, okay? And I don't really care for people that gossip too much. You know, I always believe karma will come back and get to you what's gonna happen when it's your turn to be on that pedestal and having people throwing darts at you with untruths. That's just me, that's just how I think. But this story popped into my head and I really think it's because my system is like, get rid of it, Deshanta, get rid of it. And this occurred when I was in a relationship for a long period of time. And for the most part, everything appeared to be going well. He was tall, chocolate, kept himself very neat, very nice, very quiet, very, very quiet man. But, you know, hardworking, all of that, all of the good stuff, the outside, wonderful. And um, he worked a lot and I worked a lot. I had my own cake and catering business that I worked from the home. And when I say I was busy, I was busy. I kid you not. I think in one weekend I did between 25 and 30 Barney cakes. I can't stand Barney anymore. And Power Rangers, get, get, get them away from me, okay? But um, it was my job, it was my own business, and I liked it and I was busy. So basically, everyone in the building and everyone in the neighborhood, they called me the cake lady and they knew that if I had orders and someone didn't come pick up their orders or whatever the case was, it was known that I would go outside and just give out food, okay? If I had a four tier wedding cake, what I'm gonna do with it? Go outside, it's already paid for, people didn't pick it up. I just go outside, cut it up, complete strangers. Here, you want a piece of cake here, boo? There you go. But guys, with, we're gonna call him dude dude was very very quiet very mysterious dude had asked me to marry him okay and each year there was a reason why we couldn't get married oh I want to make more money oh I want to wait till we get a house there was always a reason so I pretty much knew with the way that things was going on that he was cheating on me okay and his family was huge where we lived, he had cousins and aunties and uncles that lived in the vicinity. It was nothing for him to be outside going to the store and say, oh, I ran into my cousin or I ran into my uncle or I ran into my auntie. It was, you know, common. I didn't think anything about it. And when I would go to his mother's house, you know, you have the photo albums. Everybody got those photo albums that you got tape on it. You got to pull that little plastic piece back. Let me tell you a little secret. If you still have those photo albums, they put all the ugly, ugly family all the way underneath the pictures where you got all the pretty folks. So I got hit to that and I started looking underneath there and they, they put them in an the envelope and say, oh, don't worry about that. That's just paper. No, it ain't. That's your uncle Jojo. I know. I know. Mm, that's the one that's in the room with the door closed. Keep going. Huh? Huh? But I'm just kidding, guys. But yeah. In his family's photo album, in his mother's, at his mother's house, at his auntie's house, was just cousin okay in all the photo albums and where we live there was a park with a lake that was less than a block and a half away and everyone that knew me knew that once it started getting warm I would prep macaroni salad potato salad all kinds of salad and meats and steaks and stuff and get my little hibachi put it on my shopping cart and I would go down to this lake after the kids did their homework and everybody started knowing that that's where I was I would always have food there his family would come by because they lived in the area so it was no big thing for me to see his cousin okay 
His cousin stayed in our apartment from time to time. She broke bread with us. I did things for her and her family, you know, her children, because she was married. His cousin, okay? Didn't think anything of it because he had a cousin that he was tight with. I mean, like, this kind of tight. They was always together. If you didn't know that they were cousins, you would think they were husband and wife. It's like that in some families. You just have some family members that just click like that. I didn't think anything of it, okay? So, moving forward, doing my case, he's going to work back and forth, running to this cousin, running to this, this family member. Here it is now, New Year's Eve. And I had told him, I said, look, I got a big wedding cake I have to do for New Year's Eve. I'm not gonna wanna go anywhere. I'm not gonna wanna go to a club or anything like that. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll just cook something, I'll prep something, and everybody that wants to come by, just come on by, they get a plate of food and they can go about their business. So he was like, cool, okay. So he called me from work, and where he worked at was like an hour and a half, almost, almost two hours, cause he drove like a bad out of, you know, Hades. So for me, it may have been an hour and a half, two hours, but for him, it could have been like an hour or whatever. He said, look, I may not make it for the entire party, he said, but I'm going to make sure that when that ball drops, I'm going to be there to kiss my baby, my boo-boo. You know the, the sayings, Happy New Year. So, fine. Didn't think nothing of it. Up until then, everything that he said that he was going to do, he would do it. So, everybody's going in and out, the people in the building, because I could keep my door open, because everyone in the building knew that around three, four o'clock, there was gonna be pastries and donuts and cakes and all kinds of stuff permeating through the building and they loved it. So we were like a family. So I had my door open, some other neighbors had their door open, they was playing music, people going back and forth and the time is passing. So now it's the countdown and I'm here in 10, nine, eight. Once it got to seven, cause I was in my bedroom here he comes rushing through the door. See, baby, I told you I was going to be here. We did the little countdown, did a little kissy poo. And he said, look, um, I ran into my cousin. Okay, she's in the car. She want me to drive her back home. So I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't think nothing of it because this was a common thing for him to do. And he said, well, since she lived in the same area of his mother, he said, when I drop her off, I'm going to just go by my mom's. I'm going to stay a little bit, say Happy New Year. And then I'ma come back home. I was like, cool, not a problem, babe. I got you, you know I got you. So this was like around quarter to one. He took a shower, changed his clothes, and he left. So he went downstairs and something told me to go to the window. So I go to the bedroom window and I looked out and he was parked by this hydrant. And I, in my mind, I'm like, didn't I tell you not to park at that hydrant? Because the corner was short and there was always an accident. Rear, you know, cars were being rear-ended right at that specific corner. So I said, you know what, D, you just tie it. Just go back to the party. So I see his cousin in the passenger side of my car because I had two cars so he's sitting there and I see his hands just you know because he's talking but then I start seeing his hands like you know and then I see her go like this to his head and I'm like oh okay now I'm still in the window like why are they getting ready to get into it you know I don't know what's going on the next thing you know guys he takes her face into his hands and they start kissing so at that point, I'm like, what the, when I tell you it was like I was in a trance because the only thing that's going through my mind is this is his cousin. This is his cousin. So my bestie at the time who lived in the building, she just happened to be coming around the corner coming from the store. So they just pushed each other apart. Now I'm thinking that they did that because they saw me in the window. I later found out it was because they saw my friend. So she comes upstairs and he should have known the gig was up then because she gonna tell me. She came right into my apartment. She was like, did you see that? Blah, 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 blah. You know, she's going on and on and on about it. And I'm like, look, look, I got this, I got this. I saw it. Guys, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just was like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle the situation. I didn't know what to say. I was just like, in my mind, that is his cousin. That's family. What in the world? So I was like, I got to get out of here. Whatever I got to do, if I got to sell everything that I have, I got to move out this apartment. 
So, everybody leaves. They help me clean up, close my door. He didn't come home that night. He came home the next morning, like mid-morning, like between 11 and 12. I fell asleep on the sofa, okay? And normally when he comes in from work, he'll kiss me on my forehead and, babe, I love you, and go and do what he gotta do. He just came in and walked right past me, went in the room, the bedroom, laid down, got up, took a shower, and left. Didn't say one word to me. And I had nothing to say to him. Guys, I went downstairs later on that day and there was a lady that lived in the building that knew me well. She was an older woman and she was like, Dee, what's wrong? This is not like you, you're normally happy and peppy. She said, normally you're crazy. So I asked her, I said, could you keep something confidential? And she was like, sure. So when I told her the story, she said, what? She said, the little short light skinned one? I was like, yeah, she said, that's not his cousin. I said, that's not his cousin. She said, no. She said, we all went to school together, her mother and I. She said, she is the daughter of his mother's best friend. And because they were so close, they just called each other sisters and their kids became cousins. She said, he'd been messing with her for a long time. She said, I used to think that you was down with it because when you would go to the left, they be pulling up on the right in your car. Some guys, this chick had been in my house so many times. She has spent the night in my house <laughs> so many times, okay? She broke bread in my house. I did things for her and her children. And mind you, she was married. So he was cheating on me with her and she was cheating on her husband with him. And they have been doing it for years. So guys, I never addressed the situation. And I wasn't even angry with him. I wasn't angry with her. I turned it on me. Because I couldn't believe that I didn't pick up on what was going on. I mean, they was good. They were good at what they had been doing. They had been doing it for years. And I can pretty much guarantee had the family known about it because they were tight-knit, something would have jumped off a long time ago. Especially his mom would have been like, wait a minute, because she really liked me. But, you know, but then that's family, mother's covers for their son. I mean, I just could not believe that I just didn't see the warning signs. But the thing about it is, I always wanted to believe that whatever he said to me was true. I just felt like I was gullible guys. I was just gullible and there's no other way to put it. I was just plain stupid. That's what it was. Because after I left, I started seeing all of the red flags. Why he would just jump up whenever she came around. Why his personality would change when she was in the room. And you know, I just couldn't, I just didn't put two and two together at the time. I just really didn't because in my mind, she was family. So guys, all I'm going to say about that is he had perfected wearing sheep clothing. He had so many layers and he had protected, protected himself. Even though he was the wolf, he knew when and how to shed clothing when he thought that I wasn't paying attention. And I wasn't because I'm quite sure being on the outside looking in, I probably could have picked it up a long time ago. So guys, I was at the point where I was just like, I was on my way out of the relationship as it was, but I was numb. I was like, you know what? Do what you want to do. I'm not even going to get upset behind it. You just go ahead because I started planning for me and mine. So guys, listen, the only thing I could say about that story is wolves now, they have perfected their position and they come in so many different types of clothing and the conversation is perfected it's like a job for them so you know i just to this day i still feel like why didn't i see it but hey i guess at that time it wasn't meant for me to see it and when i did see it when i saw it i bounced so guys that's my little story 
for the day. I hope that you enjoyed it. Hopefully, I feel that I've improved in my life with paying attention to little things. I think that's why I'm so detail-oriented now. And um, you know what I'm about to say. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I got one more video that's going to come up tomorrow. And it's going to be seven days straight. Let me know what you think about his cousin. Okay, folks? And you know what time it is. Show yourself some love. Give yourself a hug and a kiss. And stop playing. Bye, guys.